Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm taking a look at Adaptive Pressure Advance and Orca Slicer. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I start talking about Adaptive Pressure Advance, let's just review really quickly what Pressure Advance is. Pressure Advance is a setting that tries to compensate for changes in speed and pressure as your nozzle is extruding filament across a print. We look, look at this example on screen from Ellis's print tuning guide. You'll notice that in this area here that I'm highlighting with my mouse, basically the filament has sped up or the nozzle has sped up and it causes a thinning in the line. And if we look at the bottom in an actual example, maybe it causes a gap. Then later on in the print, here's an area of this bulge where the print slows down and the extruder hasn't compensated for that slowdown. So you have too much filament is extruded and over extrusion. And again, here's a blob in the line down the bottom. So you can see it right here. So there's these changes in speeds. Now with pressure advance, it's a setting to try to compensate for this but it's one size fits all. So it's one setting no matter what speed or acceleration you're using. And so one size fits all, it's not perfect in all cases. Adaptive pressure advance is the idea that you're going to use a different pressure advance depending on your print speed, your acceleration. So you basically run a model test different print speeds and accelerations, and then plug those into your printer and that tries to have more nuance to what pressure advance is doing. You still have your old pressure advance and that's your good enough setting. And then you'll have your adaptive pressure advance settings that help you, again, try different settings and equations depending on that print speed and acceleration. So let's switch over and take a look at adaptive pressure advance. So as I mentioned, Adaptive Pressure Advance, and here's a screenshot in Orca Slicer. It has different pressure advances, different speeds, and different accelerations. So the way you test this, and let me scroll down to a sample. In this example, they're using accelerations of 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, and then trying four different print speeds. And so they create models using the pattern for each of these print speeds and accelerations. And this is three accelerations, four print speeds. So you're actually going to have a total of 12 patterns that the printer is going to use. Now, what's pretty cool about this is I had thought when I originally started looking at this video, I was going to have to run this test 12 times. Turns out Orca Slicer just lets you do it by default. Let me show you how. So if you open up Orca Slicer, I can go up here to Calibration and then Pressure Advance. And I wanna make sure that I have the pattern test selected. And in my case, I'm using a direct drive extruder, so I want that. All I need to do now to run these different tests is type in 1000, 2000, 4000, and then, type in my print speeds, and I'm gonna do 50, 100, 150, and then 200. And if I hit okay, you can see on my plate, it's generated those 12 models. Once I hit slice, there we go. And so it has each of the pressure advance values up top here. I can enter these in to put together what I need for the pressure, the advanced pressure advanced settings. So to activate advanced pressure advance, we just go to our filament settings, we scroll down and enable adaptive pressure advance. So we'll just check the box. We're just going to need to fill in our values here. Now, as I mentioned, we should have approximately 12 different values we're gonna put here. And let me give you an overview of what those values are. And we'll switch back over to the wiki. As I mentioned, you'll have a total of 12 different values. So up here, we're looking at the acceleration of 1,000, and we have our four print speeds, 50, 100, 150, 200. And we're going to need the PA value, the flow, and then the acceleration. Now flow, is actually calculated by Orca Slicer, and I'll show you that in a minute. 
in order to get to that, once you've created the models, if I look at the models and I show them on the bed, here's the 4,000 acceleration. This bottom number here is the acceleration, then the flow. And then I'm going to look at each of these models and pick the pressure advanced setting where the line looks the best. And this is the same as if you were just doing that one size fits all pressure advance. So we're just looking at the line with the sharpest corners where everything's best to find. So that'll be our first value, then the flow, and then the acceleration. Now to help speed things up and make it easy, I've created a Google Sheet, and I put this in my Clipper calibration spreadsheet that I've shared out previously. And I'll put a link in the video description below, and you can take a look at that. So here's the spreadsheet. We'll fill out the flow values, then we'll fill out the PA, and then we literally should just need to copy these values and paste them into Orca Slicer. Now I've gone ahead and run these models on my Voron, and I printed them off camera. I'll be honest with 12 different PA tests, even though they're running simultaneously, it does take about two, two and a half hours, at least for me to run them. You got to remember, particularly with the PA tests, it runs slower on that first layer. Let's look at the results and see if we could determine what the best PA value is for each acceleration. Now, before we look at the results, I should mention, I, I forgot to say, how I came up with the speeds I'm testing, as well as the accelerations. If you read the wiki carefully, you'll notice that it recommends an acceleration no lower than 1000. And you want to use a max acceleration that is approximately whatever input shaper recommends as your highest acceleration. You're going to test input shaping for your X and Y, and whatever the lowest value is for acceleration, that's the max you want to do. If you do any acceleration beyond what Input Shaper recommends, all you're doing is trying to correct for artifacts left over from the Input Shaper, and you're sort of canceling out what you're doing. Now, for speeds, the recommendation is a max speed of approximately 200 or 250. I'm just using the 200 just to keep things simple and also so I could check my values against those in the examples online. I'm also very comfortable with the 200. I did do an input shaping test and I think my value was approximately 3,800. So I just went with the 4,000. Now I'll link above to a video for input shaping and I may redo a video for input shaping just to take a quick look at that and to show everybody again how to do that. So with that being said, let's take switch over to my desk and we'll take a look at the results. So here are the results. Now I did these in orange, which I don't particularly like, but I did that in orange because I'm using uh, BQ cryo grip bed, the glacier. I really like this. It, everything adheres really well. And I wanted to make sure I picked a filament that stood out on this blue background. So what I can start with is I'm going to start with the acceleration of 1000, get all the flows, and then I'll put those in my spreadsheet. And so let me start with just getting all the flow values, and then we'll look at some of these individual tests and just determine which PA value looks the best. So let me switch over to the spreadsheet. Now I just want to point this out. The flow rates are actually the same for each acceleration. So once I figure them out once, there's a little bit of trouble sometimes reading these because the numbers actually sometimes run into this border over to the side. So just be aware of that. Again, they could be a little hard to read, but I did just fill in my spreadsheet. Now I have some extra accelerations here. I just put those in. I'm only doing the thousand, two thousand, and the four thousand. So now I just need to look at each model here and pick out the sharpest corners. So I'm going to do that off camera and select the values that I think are the best. 
And let me come back and we'll show those in the spreadsheet. Now, just to sort of show my work here, what I do is just look through all these lines and I try to pick the line that has, I guess, the sharpest corner here in the center. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so we can see it. So right now I'm looking at the 4,000 acceleration with 7.9 flow. And I'm looking at these lines. And if I look at the 0.5 line, I feel like that's the best. Down here, I feel like I'm seeing a little bit of gaps over in here. It's hard not to shake the camera and my desk and everything else. So I'm going with about 0.5 is the best. And so that's how I'm picking them. I'm just looking, make sure there's no remnants on the sides out here. And then just looking for that sharpest arrow in the middle here. Now you can see these ones down at the bottom here. And again, I apologize. You start to see gaps in the lines through here. And so just want a nice tight point. Like I said, for me, I think 0.5. So I've gone ahead and translated all those values over in my spreadsheet. And now just to continue, I'm going to move these over into Worker Slicer. So let me switch over to Worker Slicer and just show you what I do to finish this out. Now to get these values in, I'm just going to highlight them over here, copy, and then paste them into the box. Go down to the next line, copy the next acceleration, and then let's do the last one, hit enter, paste that in. So now I have my adaptive pressure advanced values enter in. Now, just a couple things to show you on the spreadsheet because it's a little easier to see there. So let me make my screen bigger and we'll take a look. What you need to make sure of is your flow values, I believe, are in the same order. There's nowhere to put in your speed. So it's just showing your PA value, your flow, and your acceleration. So just keep that in mind. You can then paste the values from the spreadsheet over. It's nice and easy. Once you go back to Worker Slicer, you just need to make sure you hit Save. So now you're using Adaptive Pressure Advance. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. Have a good night. Bye.